when I met her, really what it was, was it was, it was the birthing or the creating of a king for me. That's how I view it. She made me into the man I am. She, she fought the fight. She, she stood her ground. She, she loved me when no one should have. And that's the thing that people don't know about me. I have hate so dearly and she has been there to say you know what i know i'm with you i see you and i'm gonna i'm gonna pick your ass up because i know you can't get up right now and it has happened so many times that she's had my back and she's she's been the reason that i'm able to get up dust myself off and go again do it again never give in never give up it's because of her love I am Jason Abraham, the shadow teacher, 33 professional wellness and sovereignty coach, practical mystic and warrior of truth and the grand illusion. I am sharing yet another enlightening conversation with writer, philosopher, researcher, master of the ancient sciences and lost wisdom, keeper of the great arcanum, Jonathan Johnson. Jason. So... We've been talking a lot about love. Mm -hmm. Love is in the air. Um, a wise poet by the name of Huey Lewis once said, the power of love is a curious thing. Make one man weep and another man sing. And specifically, the kind of love he is referring to is Eros, romantic love in that song. And I want to dive into the topic of Eros. We talked about, again, son and daughter in a previous video the, of the Holy Trinity, that the, the son is actually son and daughter, two halves that come together. We talked about gender in that video, the sacred masculine and feminine coming together. So my understanding is that you and your lovely wife have quite the story of how you met and that's what I want you to share today. I want to hear about how you and your wonderful wife, Belen, met. Okay. Um, wow, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have seen that one coming, for sure. I was living up north in Montana, and uh, I was living on a ranch by myself during the winter. And it was quiet. Nobody else was living there, just me. And uh, I had a friend that I was talking to on the phone, and that friend was having a, I was having challenges that I would, you know, I'd get to feeling pretty lonely, start uh, spiraling into some of the, the things that I wrestled with. And she said, I think you need to come see me. And I said, nah, no, nah, I'd, I'd rather not. And uh, then a, a couple of weeks later, she asked me the same question again. She said, are you sure you don't want to come? And so, I, so was this friend interested in a romantic visit with you, or was this um, strictly a... Not so much. It was just friends. Um, she was a life coach, so she was helping me with a lot of stuff, and a lot of, worked through a lot of stuff. And uh, she said, I think you should come. And I said, uh, well, I'll tell you what. If I can find the money to come, I'll, I'll do that. And uh, so the next day I went to see one of my collectors, and he bought one of my sculptures, I think. And uh, so then I had my answer. So that night I was praying, and I was asking uh, my guides to, to let me know. And they basically said, on no, no uncertain terms, they said, okay, we need to know if you're going or not, because if you're not going, then we have to re rearrange everything. But if you are going, we need to know, so we can plan on it. And so I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go. I really didn't want to go. So, so rearrange everything yeah they had to re realign the all of the pieces of the picture so that i would you know get everything i needed in the trip 
they, they had it arranged. It was, it was like a... Arranged for you to meet yeah. a, a very special person. Yeah, apparently. I didn't know that at the time. But Mother told me, she said, you need to let me know if you're going to go or not. And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll go. So I, I went right to the computer. I booked the tickets. The next day I was still confused as to why I was doing it. And um, <clears throat> so I got my stuff packed. I was very annoyed by that point because I really didn't want to spend the money I didn't have because I was living by myself out in, the, out in the middle of nowhere. And I needed the money to live on. And so I just said, okay, I'll go. And then I got on the plane. I was, by the time I got on the plane, I was pretty upset because I couldn't see any rationale, you know. And then someone, I picked up the magazine in the, in the back, the chair back in front of me, and I opened the magazine and it said something like, uh, prepare, your life is about to change, or something like that. So you're getting all these synchronicities, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was. All, all uh, of these sides saying you're on the right track. Yeah, even a woman walked up next to me, she said, oh, where are you from? And I said, oh, I'm from Montana. And she said, where are you going? And I said, going to Raleigh, North Carolina. And she said, uh, well, that's wonderful. She said, you know what? I think something amazing and magical is about to happen to you. I was just like, okay. How could this get any more obvious? And so I, I kind of just let go at that point. And then when I arrived, uh, the friend picked me up and I was staying at their house and, and she kept introducing me to all these people and it was like recognition, you know, I, I kind of had a familiarity with these people, like past life connections and things like that started to play out. And, and then one and day... You we, were aware of these past life connections yeah. right then and there? Yeah, we're like, yeah, I just could kind of tell, and it was so the. And you've been doing some past life life work regression and, and the breath work at this point, so you yeah. were starting to yeah. tap into that. Yeah, I was starting point. to get kind of in sync and, and aware of it. Um, but with them, it was just a very familiar, serendipitous. Everything was moving along perfectly. Like if I would just think a thought or say a word, it would just be done, and someone would bring it to me or offer it to me or schedule something you know and so i mentioned just off the cuff one day we were driving and i said said to my friend i said do you happen to by chance know any massage therapists because i usually i usually see one every once a month or so and she said yeah actually i do and then she didn't say anything more about it and then the next day or two she said oh i got you an appointment for a massage at such and such a time i'll drop you off and so I thought, well, that was fast. So I uh, remember driving there. I didn't think anything of it. I just thought probably just some older woman. And, or it could have been a guy, but I didn't figure with her name it would be a guy. And we arrived at the house, pulled up, and I still remember I stepped out of the car. And I was looking down when I got out of the car, but I looked up, and when I saw her, my eyes met. I kind of took an energetic step backwards because it kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting to see her. But as soon as I saw her, I knew. I knew it was her. Yeah, tell me more about that feeling. It kind of startled me because that's why I was the whole trip. That's why I didn't want to go because I was thinking, I thought I, thought I was going to find the one so many times, so why would I buy into it this time? But when I saw her, she just kind of, I felt surprised. I felt a little startled. But I also felt the power of it. It's like when you come, when you get close to each other, the, the energy, it gets so much bigger, mm -hmm. especially with her and I. And so I felt that initial charge and it kind of took my breath away. It was like I kind of had to catch my composure, which is saying now, a lot because I don't Did it. you have any inclination that she was feeling that too um, at that moment, just like you were feeling? I knew she would probably be less aware of it because I'm pretty wide awake. So I figured it would take her a little longer to get it. But I, but I also knew when I looked at her that she probably felt the same thing. I, I, I knew that much anyway, and I figured that much. Um, and she later admitted that. But uh, and then uh, I went in, and I remember walking in. I had my old holy jeans on. They were so worn that you know they were just tattered rags. They were my favorite pants. And I remember walking in and sitting down and she said so so what's going on what, what are you 
uh, what's been going on for you lately? And um, I thought, oh gosh, where do I start? I mean, so I, for the first time, which I normally don't do with people, I just said, well, I just, it just, I'm worn out. Um, I'm tired and I just feel like I can never just be my whole self. I can never just be me. And I feel so lonely most of the time because I can't be myself. And, uh, and it was quite amazing because she really, she really heard what I said. Some people, you know, they acknowledge what you say and they repeat things back to you. But I could tell she really heard what I was saying. And then uh, she responded by uh, encouraging and really kind of almost repeating back what I had said. So, so, you, so you feel like you can't really be your whole self and you feel isolated. And I said, yeah, I do. But to hear her say it back to me, I knew she understood it. It wasn't just, it wasn't just her talking, you know. So, and then, I, and then she gave me a really amazing massage. It was, you know, best massage I'd had and so it was amazing in that respect too but I could feel the connection building and I tried to ignore it you know because I just met her I didn't know anything about about her but it kept building and so then at the end of the massage she said you know are you open to me doing a ceremony for you and I said yeah well, like what she's like a breathwork ceremony yeah, that would be amazing. I don't know what that is, but... And so she said she would... Uh... So you had not been practicing breath work at this point? Mm -mm. Okay, so she brought you... She initiated yeah. you into she breath work. She was, yes, okay. just like so, the meeting of the goddess in the here. So I was journey. mistaken in that you yep. were... But you were looking into past life regressions before, but, yeah. but not the breath work. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you for clarifying. Yeah, it was... That was new to me. So she initiated me into the process of... Uh, it's in the hero's journey when the when the hero meets the the goddess. It's the the return. You have to. It's kind of like the call to action. You have to either accept the call or you deny the call and retreat out of the cave. And so she said, "Is that something you'd be interested in and open to?" And I I was a bit surprised uh, coming from such a big family like I I do. We don't get a lot of one on one um, courtesies. You know, too many kids, too much going on. You don't get one-on-one -on -one attention. And so when she did that, it kind of surprised me because she cared enough about me to do that, to to offer that. And then not only that, but she had to do the whole thing and the ceremony. And, and I didn't know what it was, but I just trusted her. I just thought, okay, well, that's pretty cool. That'll be fun. Um, and then so she was very excited by that, I could tell. Um, and I believe in that one, there was... She was really feeling, so for a massage therapist, they have days where they do really great work and days that, you know, it's just a normal massage. But to that day, she had a pretty profound connection and with the massage and she said it was very powerful. The magic was there. Yeah. She felt like she was really connecting to, to source and all that stuff. So it was really, really a beautiful exchange and then the, the request for the breath work. So then I left, and um, I knew, like I knew in, in here, I knew there was something there. And I tried to just kind of let it be, though, you know. But then I, I mentioned to uh, the friend, so well, maybe we could do dinner sometime, you know, because I was really interested in her now. I was kind of like, felt this draw. It's like we could invite all the people that want to come. And I was meeting her too as well. And uh, she said, yeah, that would be a good idea. We could have dinner. So then she came over to dinner with, uh, with her daughter. And uh, it just felt very magnetic. Like It's that kind of magnetic pull where you just want to be closer to the other person. But I was still trying to, you know, keep it all cool and <laughs> together. Um, but there was just this connection. And then I was trying to help with the daughter and just give her a break so she could eat her food and just simple things, you know. But we both felt that very distinct magnetic pull. And uh, it's like we were the only two people in the room kind of thing. But you're trying to play cool, trying to keep your composure. But 
would you say inside of you there was just part of you that wanted to surrender to that? Yeah, yeah. I, by that time it was getting pretty strong. And this is the second time you've seen her? Yeah, it was only right. the second time, yeah. Um, and it was wonderful dinner, the food was good, conversation was good. Uh, it was a really nice night. And, and normally she would never be out too late because she needed to put the, the baby down to sleep at a certain time and she was very strict about that. So she completely disregarded her, her routine just to be there with us. And so that meant a lot to me too. And um, I remember walking her out to her car. I just, I just felt compelled. I had to. I, I wanted to go walk her out to her car so she could leave. But what I really wanted to do was like go ride, drive around with her and talk. But and we, I think she felt the same way. But we both just kind of, you know, just let it be. And then I said goodbye and she left. And... Uh, so then we did the then the breathwork ceremony came around. All of her friends came, or all of the friends that were involved in that little group, and <clears throat> we started doing breathwork. And it was my first time doing breathwork, so it was my first initiation into what it does, how it works. She guided us through the process, and I think there was seven people or something like that. It was, it was a small group, but uh, it was nice because they were all I knew them all, and we were all breathing together. She held the whole space. She did all the, the breathwork. And, uh, but during that breath work, I had a very profound um, experience. It wasn't my first connection with Jerusalem, but it was definitely, um, it was a rap at the door for sure. It kind of, uh, it was a hard thing to see and to face. Um, and I remember coming out of it, I was just crying a lot just because of the, the way it, I felt mm -hmm. after the fact. I don't even remember what I saw. Uh, I think it was just... It was just... I think it was just slight and subtle flashbacks that weren't like fully in my face, but I do remember something about the death and, and suffering there. Now, was she able to see this as well? Intuitively, yes, but not, not, not in her... She wasn't able to see the images, but, no. but she could feel... Some of the I think she intuitively the, knew the tension and the struggle. That, yeah, that going I think through. she could tell what I was dealing with. And this is your your past life as as that you believe was Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, and she was right there, holding space, taking care of me. And then I remember at the end coming out of it, I just felt so alone. Like I remember saying, I just feel so alone. I just don't know where she is. I wish I wish I could find her because I was talking about my 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 divine counterpart and i remember her is this she, the goddess sophia yeah, yeah yeah sophia and uh i just remember her she was supporting me through it and then i just remember her saying it's okay i'm right here and she didn't mean it like i meant it but it still was amazing to hear that at the exact moment that i said that and that's the moment that i knew okay i, I kind of realized the full scope of what was happening because the, the sense of home and safety and love and all that was so profound that I, if I needed any proof at that point, it was, that was it. So, but I still just let it be kind of. Um, and then we all sat around in a circle or half circle and it was, she, she did a secondary part after the breath work, which was an honoring ceremony where we all sat on the floor in front of this cool chair and then each individual would be called up to the chair and they would sit on the chair. And it was up to all the rest of the individuals sitting around to share the most beautiful, powerful, amazing things about the person sitting in the chair. So they would sit there and express all the beautiful things about you. And I remember that really affected me quite, quite deeply to be put in a... And it's funny because I was even was sitting there just like this. I always do this. I don't do this in this chair just because I'm trying to be civil, but this is how I always sit. I always have since forever. So I was sitting there in the chair just like this, and all these people in front of me were expressing these things about me, and I remember it really, it really deeply touched me and affected me because I had been unseen for so long in my family and just, you know, life in general with all the people and drama and trauma and 
things going on in my family that I never really got one-on-one -on -one connection. And so when she did that and everyone had what they had to say, it was genuine. It wasn't like they were just saying, oh, he's a nice guy and he's, he's cool and he does these things. It was very, very deep and very heartfelt. And they really meant every word they were saying. So it really affected me. I felt really loved. I felt really seen and supported. And um, someone even said, I don't remember who it was, but maybe it, maybe it was Bill then. I, I don't know. But someone said, yeah, it's like he's sitting in a throne and he's got this huge oak tree behind him. And I remember at the time how odd that was to hear that, but it felt so normal to me to hear that. I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes you just hear certain things and it just feels like home. It's like, it's like you knew they knew you because of the things they were relating to you and the way they were saying things. And so after that, I felt very um, seen. And I knew, then I really knew it was her because there's no one else that would ever do that for me but her. It's to really make sure that I was seen and honored and loved and thanked and for all, for all the things I've done. And so I knew it was her energetically. Now, mentally, it still wasn't 100% um, with both of us. But after that, we right, she closed up and I said I'd stay behind and help her out. And I helped her pack up her stuff and put everything in the car. And then I, I said goodbye to her there, I think. And, um, and then I got scheduled for another massage and that massage was way more, uh, profound. That one, that, and now I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in anymore. So I eventually, it just came out. I just said uh, how much, you know, it meant for me to be there with her and that she was, I found her. And then I think at the end, after the massage, at the end of the massage, I actually said, I'm not leaving here without you. And what I meant was, is I'm talking, so that's the thing everybody watching these videos should know about me. I'm always talking from a spiritual perspective, not talking from a human or egoic perspective. So if I say mother and father, I'm not talking about my biological mom and dad. I'm talking about my spiritual mother and father. So when, um, when I said that to her, she thought it was the other way around. And so we still laugh about that today. But uh, I knew that day. That day I knew. And then I had to leave like two days later. <laughs> Let's go back to Montana. Yeah. I was set to return flight back. So when you said, I'm not leaving here without you, how did she receive that? <laughs> she got a little flustered. She got a little um, flustered, be well, just because she had another client coming. So she thought, she <laughs> she thought I meant I was going to hang out. But what I meant was, no, uh, now that I've found you, I'm not leaving here without you. Meaning Earth, meaning this place. I, so... So, um, yeah. so, but it was, it so, was she, so she's a little flustered. So tell, how did you recover from that? Because obviously you're in a different place. How did, how um, did... I, she was, she just needed a little time to, to adjust herself okay. to okay. what was happening. It was all fine, but. Okay. So you have two days left here. What's next? Then I was, then I got really upset because it's like I had just found her after so long. And then you got to go. I got to go again. So I really got bent out of shape that the day, the day before I had to leave. Um, so she got a full taste of my, my passions, my, my, when I get uh, feeling like I'm not going to get anywhere with something. Um, so she, but she really handled it well. She, she talked to me on the phone. She didn't. She really tried to talk me through it and walk me through it. And I shouldn't have been that upset. It's just it was a lot to, to not expect it, have it be a surprise, and then I got to go. It's like, what? but I didn't even get to talk to her. I didn't even get five minutes to, you know, it's like finding your divine feminine Sophia and you can't even sit down and talk about it, you know. But, but it was good because I, I got on the plane the next morning and I stared at the floor of the plane the whole flight just staring at the floor, thinking about what had just happened, processing it all. And then when I got home, we did a lot of talking on the phone. I still know exactly where I was standing. The first time she picked up the phone when I called her, I was standing up on a mountain next to a sage, sage brush, brush. And, uh, and I talked to her several times. So, so you called from Montana or did she call you? I called from Montana. So you called and she picked yeah. up. Yeah, she, 
She picked up my phone call. <laughs> so, can you offer, are, are these some good one-liners for someone in need of dating help? Mm. Wow. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm kidding on that. But well, if they're this, the right this, one, this, this is an interesting story, though. This is this yeah. is an unusual story. So, carry on. Yeah, so I called her, and then we just kept talking and talking from there. I, I would go, so I had a ritual. I'd get up out of bed, hit the floor, do my meditation, breath work. It wasn't breath work, like the breath work she showed me, but it was just I would sit and that's my meditation, so I just breathe. So this was the, in, in the first video, this is the initial breath work that you did before this, this, uh, this next evolution of it when you... We're starting to go into your trauma. So this is the yeah. original system or, or pieces of it, I guess, that you your spirit had guided you to. Yeah, it actually all started with meditation. I would just get up right out of bed, go hit the floor, and sit in lotus and just, just breathe. Breathe, gotcha. And I would meditate. And then I started having flashbacks, and I could see people different parts of the world and past life memories. and But then, uh, then I would do my morning thing, you know, a little bit of stretching, and then I would go up on the mountain. There was a mountain next to our ranch house there, and I'd go up on top of the mountain. And uh, that was part of my exercise for the day. And so I started calling her up there. That's where I always go to make calls, because it's the only place you could get cell phone reception. It was way out in the boonies. And so, you, again, and she picked up. You did something. Mm -hmm. There was obviously some connection. She didn't get creeped out by the... The ultimate claim. I'm not leaving here without you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving here without you. Yeah. So yeah. There, there, there's the, the there's dating. The one there's the one line. Yeah, yeah. yeah she she uh, opened right up, and we just began talking. And, and, of course, by that time, she had had time to process, and she was up to speed, and she knew what was going on, though we didn't have all the, the facts and figures and you know exact dates and lifetimes and all that stuff, but we knew. So then it just started to open up. We started to there be more There was a divine honest. connection there. Yeah, and then we started dealing with the things that we knew were going to be problems or things that needed addressing before we came back together. Because see, her and I have so much history together that that it no, no, started right away. Now, are these problems, are, are we looking at 3D problems of this life or are these problems from previous lives? Yes, previous lives, traumas, things like that. And you're going right into that. Energetically, it yeah. wasn't an open so, so discussion, but it was. We were just like, it's like as soon as we found each other, it was like we were we were ready to go at it together with this kind of an attitude. Okay, so the, the, so you're having this conversation of, of words in the three D, but there's these feelings that are even deeper with with the obstacles of of something that's from beyond. Yeah, it's like you can sense each each other's fears and so what, what, But have, what's the conversation going like? What's the 3D going like to actually bridge that gap? Because you know, you're still in another state. You're mm -hmm. far away at this point. At that point, it was very powerful and amazing and all-consuming and beautiful. It was like it was like home. It was, but it was potent. So it's like imagine falling in love, but imagine falling in love with a divine counterpart that you've known for millions of years, and and you just you just know and you remember, and it was just this rush of memories, and it, it's like you know the first statement she still was when I made that comment about I'm not leaving here without you. She thought you know, but by the time we started talking on the phone, things just started pouring in, and she started, we both started remembering like our connection, and we would. We would talk openly about it more, more and more openly as we progressed, and uh, it was just kind of one thing after another after another. And the little, the little things that we were feeling subconsciously were just so that we could get closer and closer together. Talking about things like just things that subtle things like, like okay, yeah, now we know who we are to each other. So how's this gonna work, kind of thing? So we were just very. Um, so when you called, there's al there's already this familiarity, and you're going in and you're you're bridging this common ground and and uh, building. Yeah. 
It, it was. It started to happen quite quickly. Even though you really haven't seen each other that much, mm. like it was only a few times you saw each other in North Carolina. Yeah, it was three times. Yeah, yeah. Three. Not, not a whole lot. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, it, it happened so quickly. It was all very, very fast. Um, but we just knew. It's like you, you can't. When it's the right person, you just know, and there's no, there's no getting away from that. You just sense it. You know it. You feel it. I think what we were initially working with was just okay. How can we make? How can we? Uh, what people, a lot of people that don't understand past lives is, is it, it? You carry it all around with you. Whatever happened in other lives, you do carry it. You, you react to certain things. You feel certain things. So we were very much understanding that it would take work. We even had open discussions about that. It was brief, but it was just like, okay, how we, how do we make it work, you know? And uh, and of course, the first step is, is do I come live down there, or you know, what do we do? Right. So you're you're trying to, so you have these obstacles again in the in the 3D world, which mm -hmm. I was alluding to as well, and you're trying to figure out this in a very practical way yeah. of of looking at this. Yeah. And. And you're both you're both thinking the same thing, but you're, there's there's all these obstacles or they're scattered puzzle pieces that don't seem to fit yet, and you're trying to figure out how to put it together. Yeah, and not to mention the the things that you would feel like, how's this going to work, kind of thing. How's this going to work? Because the thing about her and I is we're so powerful that so powerful that if there are wounds, traumas, pains between us, we realize the gravity of that. It requires and a lot of work and it requires a lot of devotion. Because the, they are going to play out in this, this life yeah. between you. Yeah. And, and you will essentially that's um, part of the healing of our souls. We meet these other souls that we have this profound attraction to. Yeah. They usually are going to trigger some of the most terrifying elements of our, our psyche that are within us that have not been expressed. Yeah, and that's, I don't like to use labels, but the difference between like a divine couple, a couple, a couple that's two halves of the same whole versus like soulmates who just help each other or do different aspects of the journey together. I don't like to use the names because, you know, everybody has a different take on the name. Mm -hmm. Some people yeah, think soulmates flames. are, yeah, some people think soulmates are twin flames. So whatever aspect you like, but it's just when you have two, two counterparts that are one, be, one being, but they're just two halves of the same, they are the hardest and the most challenging because you have to, they're, usually you run into them when you've got a divine mission to fulfill or a purpose to, hmm. to do, and they help you to do it. It's like without them, you can't do they it. Are your, uh, she would be your muse, yes, essentially. Yin and yang, whatever. Yeah, and and, and uh, you would be her rock. Yeah. So that would be the the divine feminine and the divine masculine finding a way to come together and bring the best out of each other. Yeah, I believe it's actually called heroes gamos, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the term everybody's using. It means I see you and me, and I see you in me, and you see me in you. It's it's you see the divine in each other, but you're also here to do something, to, to, uh, something that goes beyond the eros, the, the, yeah. the, the romantic love between something that goes beyond, you're, you're bringing a gift to the world, the gift to yeah. the village, if you will. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, those are the hard, the hard things to okay, do. Okay. So you're, you're, you're still in Montana. How do we bridge that gap? How, do you, how did you end up in North Carolina? Uh, we talked for, I think it was three months or so, we were on the phone. And that was a really good time. It was, it was a good downtime. It was good calibration time to get used to each other and get used to the whole, the whole thing. And it, it, it built quite quickly. We really developed a and so rapport. At that point, were, <clears throat> were you... Would you say you're you're romantically involved in some way, even though you haven't physically met, or did or, or, or yeah. were, were there any other people? Were you dating someone, or was she at that time, or is that? No, we were we were both pretty much available for the most part. It was just just kind of tying up things. Um, 
And but it built the romantic part built very yeah, quickly because of the potency. The building, charge. building the connection that's already there and, and remembering at the same time. It's, it's a little bit of both. It's like yeah. you're built. And that was the magical part is it's like, wow, you know, like remembering because the familiarity was so, so vast and so deep with us. I mean, from so many lives and, and so many things we've experienced together. You know, when you go through think, challenging things with a person, it really, it really galvanizes your bond. It, it just, there's no, no way it couldn't because you're that committed to each other and to the purpose and to the mission. And, you know, all of my worst times, she was right there. And all of her worst times, I was right there. Didn't always end well, but we were always there for each other through hell, through the worst but we were also with each other through the most profound and beautiful parts of the journey. So when we came back together, it was a collision of joy and passion and beauty and divine, unconditional divine love. But it was also a collision with, oh, that really hurt. And I, oh, I can't really remember that, but I feel it. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was still more subconscious at the time at, the, at that particular time but the, the potency and the, the beauty that started to develop and I still you know remember even before meeting her all the things mother would whisper to me and tell me you know she would tell me you know what to expect or that you're going to meet her and she did give me warnings I just I just wasn't really ready so you're talking for three months and then you make the jump to North Carolina like how does that happen so I was living on that ranch uh, in Montana in the mountains by myself and the land was already sold. They were going to sell the land and so I was basically squatting for seven months. Just just holding my time, biding my time till something developed for me because I had no, I was homeless, I had nowhere to go, I had nowhere to live, I was just waiting. So when I went to North Carolina and met her, it was all like just perfectly divine synchronicity. That's why mother was saying, are you going to go or not? Because this is a whole arrangement here. We've got your whole rest of your life planned around you going and so meeting her. So what was the opportunity again? What, what finalized that to get when to, to pull you here to North Carolina? It was what the, opened the, up. the place was ready to be sold or it was going to be sold. And they were arranging that. So I had a little bit of time to hang out there. Went and met her, but as soon as I met her, then everything kind of sped up and I needed to get my stuff ready. So I came back, we talked on the phone, and while, all the while I was preparing, and then it just happened like clockwork. I just put everything I had that I cared about in my vehicle, and I just drove to North Carolina. And uh, it just all happened perfectly. Did and you show up on her doorstep? <laughs> I did, actually. Uh, and she didn't kick you out? <clears throat> no, she didn't. I, I actually showed up at a hotel and because I didn't want to jump right in her world. And, you know, uh, I didn't want it to be too much. So I stayed at a hotel. And then she came and visited me there just to kind of get adjusted. And that, that was really amazing. It was just like your most powerful kind of magic. Just that evening I was just, I still remember when I was waiting there at the hotel for her to come. She finally got free and she was headed over. I still remember that feeling just building and building the excitement to see her after so long, you know. I still remember she just parked at the curb. She threw open the door and she ran over and just threw her arms around me. <clears throat> She just threw her arms around me and it was like home. It was just, oh my gosh, I can't believe after all this time, here she is. And to be, to be holding her in my arms freely, like, like, like I was allowed to, like it was, like the door was opened to love again. And it was <clears throat> very, very powerful, like palpably potent. And then she... We enjoyed the evening eating dinner and just different things. And uh, and then the very next day, I went over to her house and she, everything just lined up. And she just said, you can stay here now. And so I went to my car. We were on the couch just watching TV. 
And I said I had to do something, and I got up, I went out to my car, and I went to my glove box, and I had bought her a ring. I put a lot of thought into it, because I didn't know what she would like. You know, I knew in my heart what she would like, but I just had to kind of piece it together the best I could. I grabbed it, and I came back inside, and then I, I knelt, or I sat there next to her, and I, I said, I asked her if she'd marry me, and I showed her the ring, and she started crying, and said yes so wow <laughs> so what is this the fifth time you've seen each other actually oh, gosh. is that or something, it's something it's got to be something like that because you saw it three times initially then you're away for three months and you come back is this like this and this is the yeah. second time so yeah look at me and my math that's wow yeah that's and it all just it was all like clockwork everything just lined up yeah well such a powerful story and me the wellness and sovereignty coach, a little fun fact, every bit as important as sleep, diet, exercise, I'd say more important is meaningful human relationships, meaningful connection, and nothing quite so powerful as just having you know, a partner who sees you and who you feel that sense of home with, that, that sense of being home and feeling that in your heart as you had in the story, as, as your muse, your goddess showed up and brought this extra power out of you, purpose and power. I'll say that's the other thing, having purpose. People need a sense of purpose in their lives to be healthy and vital. And it was your goddess that showed you that. It was able, by, by seeing you and being able to hold space for you, where you felt at home that's what i get from the story yeah i you know anything that i've ever been able to do or accomplish or is because of her um, and i would I, I always um my thinking is that when this thing this whole thing's a wrap that she needs she needs to be sung to in the most glorious way by every angel there is because wow. there are some things that without the right kind of love, without the right kind of person, I would not be sitting here without her. And that's it. Without Sophia, without my Bethlehem, I would not be alive. Nor, not even that, too. I would be destroyed. I would have been psychologically and emotionally ruined because the amount of strength she has had to some of the things she's had to watch me endure are beyond anything anyone should have to witness so every day when she chooses me every day when she says i love you it's it's another miracle because she has paid the ultimate price. She has paid so many times, too. It's not just, it wasn't just one occurrence. She has paid every day with her, with everything she has in her to just keep at it and do it again, even after the worst circumstances and things that have happened. And to me, you know, if we pull this whole thing off, that's, I want everybody to know now, not even when we get home and all the angels are there to sing her praises. I want everyone to know now that it's because of her that, that all of what everybody's seeing happening in the world right now is because of her. Because she's always been the catalyst. She's always been the thing that creation comes out of. Um, like I joke with her all the time, she's the one who's who's... She's source. She's the one from which it all comes out of. She's the cultivator, the nurturer. She holds space for all of creation. All I do is do stuff with it, you know, I make things or create things or, you know, I act in it. But if I have nothing to act in, if, if, if there's nothing to create with, then there's nothing there to be made. There's no wonder and beauty and glory. And, and to me... I want everyone to know how fundamental and instrumental and absolutely critical 
She has been through this whole process. Every day I am... When I met her, really what it was, was it was, it was the birthing or the creating of a king for me. That's how I view it. She made me into the man I am. She, she fought the fight. She, she stood her ground. She... She loved me when no one should have. And that's the thing that people don't know about me. I have paid so dearly. And she has been there to say, you know what? I know. I'm with you. I see you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick your ass up because I know you can't get up right now. And it has happened so many times that she's had my back. And she's, she's been the reason that I'm able to get up, dust myself off, and go again. Do it again. Never give in. Never give up. It's because of her love. And the, the, you know, a hero's journey isn't down to the hero. It's down to the people who support that hero. It's down to you. Being here, being my brother, doing this every day. You do it because you love me. You do it because you love us. You do it because you love the world. And you know, I watch it every day, my brothers and my sisters and my wife and so many devoting themselves to the cause, devoting themselves to God and to proving every single day, to proving that it's love, that no matter what happens, I'll get up and I'll do it again. I'll get up again and again, no matter how many times it takes. And she has been the thing that taught me that because she has done it to me and for me so many times. What would you say to someone who's watching who has not found their divine counterpart, who's alone and, and is maybe starting to doubt that even exists? I'd say you're lucky because that's exactly where you need to be right before it happens. So I looked and I looked and I saw and I everywhere, every direction for her. I did. I looked everywhere. But it wasn't until I just said, you know what, to hell with it. I give up. As soon as I did that, it came rushing at me. Interesting. It's that surrender. It's that just... Surrender and letting go. So just let love leave. go. It, it, will, it will find you. It will seek you out. And yeah. I was led right to her front doorstep. Yeah, well, I think this is a, a good place to end. You know, love is in the air. Love is in, in my life, too. I'm falling in love right now and feeling that as well. And this conversation, I believe, was truly inspired by something beyond. And it's all about love when it all comes down to it. So doing our goddamn best to let love lead the way. Yeah, love, it changes everything if you just let it. My wife has a saying that she, she wrote it on her mirror. It says, love heals all, so let it. It's basically saying just let it in. Let it in. And that's and I'm finding that with the, what everybody's dealing with right now. You know, we were talking about that before this, this session, my wife and I, about, you know, really what the people need to know is that that's it. Just hang on to love, the ones you love, but more importantly, go in there, find that love, and then be in it. Hold it. Yeah. When you're afraid, when you don't know what's going on. And, 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 and now we're, you know, we were initially talking about romantic love this is the, the bigger love this is kind of what we're looking at is the the other faces of love the agape the godly love or the brotherly love yeah. uh, on the final note we love you and we will see you very soon for another revelation conversation